This year of 2020, and especially the spring season, uh, has put the world into a very strange situation. It is something unprecedented, the relationship of people, how we are functioning in society, how the economy is moving, how we live our very lifestyles. And it has put many people into a total confusion. It was very eerie for me going through the streets today and seeing nobody on the streets and nobody in the stores. And it is as though the earth has been totally um, cleansed of any negative uh, relationship with human beings. But Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu actually gave us a glimpse of what would be coming as we go toward the day of resurrection. Because we as Muslims, we need to remember that we are rapidly moving toward the day of judgment. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, لا تقوم الساعة حتى تدهل الفتن ويكتر الكذب وتتقارب الأسواق. He said that the last hour would not appear, la taqumasa'a, until fitan, the plural of fitna, which is trials and tribulations, they would appear throughout the land. And lying would be on the increase and the marketplaces come close. This tradition uh, constantly surprises me. It is reported in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed, authentic hadith. And um, it's shocking every year as we go through different changes to see how these words are coming to pass. Because the fitna, this fitna of coronavirus, this tribulation, this trial is stalking the whole planet. There is virtually nobody on the planet Earth who is free of this. The only place they say is down in Antarctica. And so it is a widespread universal fitna, a trial and tribulation. But what is interesting, he put with this lying would be on the increase. And you would expect that in the time of trials, people would try to be honest, but it's the opposite. And then the prophet, peace be upon him, ended this by saying, marketplaces would come close. This is always shocking to me because the original muhaddithin must have looked at the marketplace as being outside of Medina, outside of the city, and then coming in. But now we are dealing with marketplaces literally in our homes. And we see more and more people having food delivered, having clothing delivered, having all of their appliances delivered, some doing business, they, they turn on their laptop in their bed and they go into the international marketplace. So Sadaqa Rasulullah, the marketplaces are coming closer and closer and closer as we reach toward the day of resurrection. This coronavirus uh, is a serious test. It is not only a test or a trial physically, but even more than that, I believe it is a psychological trial and a spiritual trial. And this is where we need to be aware of what is going on. What is difficult for many people is that when they talk about the microbes, when they talk about the virus, they are talking about something which is unseen. So it is literally negative unseen. And you hear words coming out like in America, they're saying it's a war between humanity and the microbes. But where are the microbes? You can't see them. And so it's a type of negative uh, enemy, a battle with the unseen that you cannot quantify. And so for many people, it is disheartening. It brings about despair because they don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. They don't know who their enemy is. But as Muslims, we have to realize that the last message, which is delivered for all of humanity, when this is in its second chapter, Surah Al-Baqarah, it is beginning by saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif la mim, thalik al-kitab la rayba fi, hudal al-muttaqeen, alladhina yu'minuna bil ghayb, al-ayah. It says, Alif la mim, this is the book in which there is no doubt. Guidance for those who have the consciousness of Allah. Those who believe in the unseen. And so right in the beginning, we are commanded and encouraged that the quality of the believer, and it's the quality for all humanity who should be submitting to their Lord, 
is that we believe in a positive unseen. So we believe in prophets. We believe in revelation. We believe in uh, the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has come uh, in previous times. And so we should surround ourselves with positivity. And that belief in the unseen, the positive unseen, will counteract the negative unseen. But we really need to be strong in these times. We cannot be overcome by the panic and the fear. We have to be balanced and depend upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this strength, as the Prophet gives us in one of his beautiful traditions, uh, which is reported in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Al Mu'min al Qawi khayrun wa ahabbu ila Allah min al Mu'min al Da'if wa fi kullin khayr. He said that the strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer, but there's good in both of them. And then he said, Ihras ala ma yanfa'uka wa sta'in billah wa la ta'ajas wa in asabaka shay'un fa la taqul law anni fa'altu kitha kana kitha wa kitha wa lakin qul qaddar Allah wa ma sha'a fa'ala. This is a very important statement. The Prophet ﷺ said, Strive for that which benefits you. Seek help from Allah and do not become weak. If a calamity befalls you, then do not say, well, if I did this, I did that, it would be this or that. Because what we should say is that Qadr Allah wa ma fa'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed it and what he will will come to pass. And at the end, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that this concept of if, this opens up the door for the shaitan, billah. And so that doubt that comes in, if we should do, if we do that, no. We believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at the same time, we recognize that Allah has given us intelligence, Allah has given us that ability to balance ourselves. That in the time of this crisis, that our strength will come from self-control, controlling the environment around us, controlling where we go, controlling how we act. And that really is part of our message of Islam. It's that balance, it's that ummat and wasata, that balanced nation, that middle nation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us through the example of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. So let us never forget this as we are going through this crisis. It is only a period of time. Everything has a limit and Allah is the controller of all things. Never forget that Allah is closer to us with his knowledge than even our juggler veins. And we pray that Allah would protect us and protect this world and give the Muslims the unity and the strength to come out of this crisis as strong believers and ready to serve Allah. I leave you with these thoughts. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات أياما معدودات فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية طعام مسكين فمن تطوع خيرا فهو خير له وأن تصوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون وأن 
تصوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون أحل لكم ليلة الصيام الرفث إلى نسائكم هن لباس لكم وأنتم لباس لهن علم الله أنكم كنتم تختانون أنفسكم فتاب عليكم فتاب عليكم وعفى عنكم فالآن باشروهن وابتغوا ما كتب الله لكم وكلوا واشربوا حتى يتبين لكم الخيط الأبيض من الخيط الأسود من الفجر ثم أتم الصيام إلى الليل ولا تباشروهن وأنتم عاكفون في المساجد تلك حدود الله تلك حدود الله فلا تقربوها كذلك يبين الله آياته للناس لعلهم يتقون